Memorial Health System provides comprehensive health services that meet the needs of the region we serve. And we are proud to present Memorial Health Radio. Here's Melanie Cole. So often, men who have any issues at all with their sexual abilities or any other aspect of their health, they tend to be reluctant to speak with their physician. They feel embarrassed about discussing these things, and they really don't always even want to go to the doctor. So here to discuss men's health issues is Dr. Carson Wong. He's a urologist with Memorial Health System. Dr. Wong, as I said in the intro, men are hesitant to even go to the doctor, my husband included. What do you want men to know about the importance of seeing their primary care provider, their urologist, their dentist, anybody else, and getting these checkups? Well, what you're saying is so true. Uh, and uh, historically, uh, that was very, very prevalent as, uh, as men tended to have to maintain the uh, machismo and, and hence uh, did not really engage in locker room discussions regarding these things, whereas our, our female counterparts are, are much better at that as evidenced by um, um, you know, breast cancer awareness and, and all the things that have been going on. However, in recent times, um, you know, Men's Health magazine, uh, there have been community events where um, more and more uh, urologic procedures or urologic conditions um, have become more acceptable to be discussed uh, on a social, uh, in a social setting, uh, and specifically some of the things that you touched upon, um, erectile dysfunction, uh, problems voiding. Uh, these are things that tend to happen as, as we men uh, have more birthdays. Um, TV commercials um, and the fact that we're actually having a conversation um, over the radio right now regarding this issue. So the key thing is to say that there are cer- certain things that one must uh, get checked in order to decrease the risk of bad things happening down, uh, down the line. So specifically, um, the things that we should focus on, I think, are, are uh, for urologists is uh, avoiding symptoms, prostate issues, and um, the other thing uh, that's been more publicized uh, because of certain oral medications that have uh, become on vogue is uh, erectile dysfunction. Well, so you're a urologist, so let's start right there with your expertise. Women have our mammograms. We see our gynecologists. We've been doing it since we're 16. What do you want men to know about coming to see you, in particular, urologists, because maybe we can get them in to see another doctor, but they don't always want to go to see a urologist and get that checkup and and get their prostate checked. So what do you want them to know about the importance of coming to see a urologist, and what is it that you are looking for and looking at? Okay. Well, in general, uh, the prostate is the issue that uh, are... uh is the organ that's unique to us men. And uh, that's obviously located in an area that's not very accessible. It's not as accessible as the breast for uh, uh, self-examination by any means uh, for detecting breast cancer. And the thing with the prostate is that there are conditions that are non-cancerous that can affect your quality of life. And of course, there are cancer conditions that could definitely affect not only your quality of life, but your longevity. So one must take steps to determine uh, or to determine or uh, if, if it's one situation or the other, because that definitely will impact on them, both from a quality of life and um, health perspective. From a quality of life perspective, um, if men, as they get older, they have difficulty with urination, uh, common things being a, a weak urine stream, uh, peeing more frequently uh, during the day and night, or not being able to empty their bladder appropriately, uh, those are usually signs of or symptoms of, hey, something might be going awry. And that could be a, something as simple as just a benign enlargement of the prostate um, or something a little bit more complicated like a cancer. Unfortunately, based on symptoms alone, one cannot determine one or the other. So the current recommendations for screening are that men at the age of 50 should, in general, get their prostate examined with two components. One is a physical examination or a digital rectal examination, and two is a serum blood test called a PSA or prostate-specific antigen. These are basic things that can be done during one office visit, and it is strictly to, as a screening tool. It is not a diagnostic tool, but it is a screening tool, which if there is an abnormality, it 
will flag that individual at risk for something potentially a little bit more sinister, and therefore you should seek urologic care. What great information. Dr. Wong, what a great educator you are. So another thing that you mentioned, sexual dysfunction and low testosterone. And and we see this all over the media besides, you know, in commercials and on the radio. Tell us about these kinds of issues that men face and if there are treatments available. What do you tell them? Well, that's uh, that's probably one of those things that are a bit... Uh, uh, they're more re- men are more reluctant to discuss, uh, uh, especially given the um, the thought or perspective of embarrassment. However, um, as as we age, um, that's sometimes something that is inevitable. Or one may have other conditions that can increase one's risk of developing erectile dysfunction. For example, you mentioned something like a low testosterone, which is something that is definitely treatable, but Also, other non-urologic conditions can put one at risk, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, and and different medications that one has to take in order to treat those other conditions can also result in erectile dysfunction. So the take-home message is that, are they treatable? The answer is yes. Both conditions are low testosterone or erectile dysfunction, and there are many options much have been publicized recently with the advent, well, not so recently now, but probably within the last decade, of a pill that can treat um, erectile dysfunction. And subsequent to that, other pills have come onto the market in addition to other therapies that have been around prior to this oral medication. Wow, it's so interesting and and such great information. Now, moving along a little bit on to some other topics, stress, because while you're talking about urologic conditions and sexual dysfunction, men experience stress. I mean, women, obviously we do, but as you say, we talk about it all the time. We're always talking about all that stuff, but men don't. And stress, depression, lack of sleep, are other things that I feel that men are not as willing to discuss. Dr. Wong, what would you like them to know about the importance of discussing those things with their physician because they can contribute to all these other conditions we're discussing? Right. They absolutely can be confounding uh, issues that can result in the issues that are specific you know, to our discipline. Uh, that's, that's something that once you bring up uh, once you have a willingness to address uh, some of those are issues that we discussed earlier, then the follow-up questions that arise from that discussion should include some of the things that you outline here, such as what stressors, um, uh, uh, life issues that can potentially uh, contribute to, or even sometimes bring on the onset of some of these issues. And if some of those things get addressed, lifestyle habits, Etc. get addressed, then the urologic issue in question may actually resolve and you really don't necessarily need primary treatment for the condition itself. That's interesting. Now, before we wrap up, Dr. Wong, speak to the partners of men. How can we get them in to see any physician? What do you want us to say? Because threats don't always work. Saying you're not going to be around for your children's graduation doesn't always work. What can we say? Give us the starting point. And then I'd like to ask you to offer them your best advice so that they can take care of themselves for their good health. Well, the best advice that I can offer them is that you would rather deal with something when it is a quality of life issue than when it becomes, than waiting until it becomes a medical issue. So by that, I mean when it's a quality of life issue, for example, voiding, if it's just an inconvenience to have to get up at night, or if it's just your stream is a little bit weaker and it takes you longer to empty your bladder, that is a quality of life issue in which I, as a professional, can offer options for you from lifestyle modification to medications to proceed. But it is still your decision whether or not you would like to accept those options as a treatment, because it is purely a quality of life issue. If you wait and you let it progress and it becomes a what I like to call a medical issue when there are clear problems that are no longer just your quality of life, such as you are unable to pee 
or if you have blood in the urine, infections, or develop stones, or, God forbid, have the C word, then that becomes what I call a medical issue. And when it's a medical issue, you no longer, as an individual, have the ability to, you don't necessarily have the luxury of deciding, well, yes, I would like to go ahead with this recommendation, or now I can defer. Of course, in any medical treatment, you can always defer. However, sometimes deferral in a medical situation may not be in your best interest. You're spot on, Dr. Wong, and I am going to have my husband listen to this podcast and all of your great advice. And I think that men everywhere need to listen to this great advice because they are hesitant, but it's a different world now and they can discuss these things and they should not be embarrassed because you are a specialist and this is what you do. And thank you so much for joining us again today. And that wraps up this episode of Memorial Health Radio with Memorial Health System. Head on over to our website at mhsystem.org for more information and to get connected with one of our providers. If you found this podcast as informative as I did, and you know how important it is that the men you love listen to it, please share on your social media, share with your friends and family, and be sure to check out all the other fascinating podcasts in our library. I'm Melanie Cole.